Okay. There's two books that I'm going to just suggest right out of the gate. One is called The Medical Cannabis by Michael uh, Moskowitz, and the other one is a CBD. It's a patient guide by medical cannabis by Leonard Linnell and Julian Burnaman. The majority of this presentation is coming out of these two books. I've read several other different books on cannabis, uh, but these two, by far for practitioners, are the best that I've read uh, so far. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, here you go. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to start this presentation out what, how, how I reclaimed my health and my life with functional medicine and how I was introduced to CBD and functional medicine. I had four horrible, miserable diseases that I woke up to in the morning of 2006, and I had hives and welts all over my body. And I thought it was going to die because my airway was actually closing. Uh, as you guys know, the chronic idiopathic urticaria, I suffered with it for 10 years, and it is considered an autoimmune disease. And once you have one autoimmune disease, you're three times more likely to develop another autoimmune disease. And I ended up developing Hashimoto's. To wait, the way that I tried to control my hives was through exercise, and I overtrained, and I exercised because it was the only time that I actually kind of felt free from the disease. And that led me to developing adrenal insufficiency and chronic fatigue where I would crash like for 18, 23 hours and not even wake up because I was like, what, what is going on? Today I suffer after visiting 800 physicians. Uh, I consulted at eight different uh, specialists trying to figure out the disease and kind of traveled the world. And I now live today with the 20% of my heart that is actually fibrotic. Uh, and just so you know how bad it was, here's the angioedema, here's a picture of the side of my body. Now my hives would bubble up and then they would uh, go into before they would actually bubble up again, they would kind of smooth out and then they would bubble back up. Here's a picture of my abdomen, my legs, my arms, my chest. So basically you can see functional med medicine saved me. And in addition to that, CV CBD saved me. And I figured if uh, functional medicine ch could change the trajectory of my health and change it from illness to wellness that it could help other people's as well and functional medicine is all about going upstream and finding you know how to disappear the issues and today I actually feel a thousand times better uh, I actually I would consider that I actually have my life back and I like adventure as you can see from those photos right there uh, a form of my meditation to put my body into a parasympathetic mode because I didn't realize how important a parasympathetic mode was was I started I went and got trained in India and stayed in eight, eight months there and learned yoga and different types of uh, meditation. Uh, I knew if, uh, I, like I kind of said that, I knew if functional medicine could save me, it could also help others. And so I decided that I wanted to try in this field to become an expert. And uh, I have a master's degree in uh, business and I also am a batch I have a bachelor's in science but I went and got trained by the functional medicine coaching academy I went and got trained I went through IFM's training program I went through Dr. Axe's nutritional leadership program I went through the gluten-free society uh, I went and got Ayurvedic trained and got trained in nutrigenomics and that's where I actually learned about CBD was when I was starting when I uh, studied uh, New, uh, genomics new nu nutrition. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because you guys understand the genes, but you can see that I don't methylate very well. I operate at a 30 percent, 13 percent operating with my methylation, and we know that's responsible for 150 biochemical responses in your body. I don't detox very well. Uh, I could be worse, but I do. I'm a person that needs glutathione. Uh, uh, neurotransmitters, uh, some of them are polymorphed as well, and uh, this is where I got, I stopped and really started to understand CBD because I turn on inflammation. I have three of the four that are uh, polymorphed, and I don't turn off inflammation very well in my body, and this prolongs 
And this typically when somebody has this, this is when they're susceptible to a autoimmune disease. The endocannabinoid system, I started researching and currently there's 8,000 PubMed, PubMed articles on CBD. And we still only partially understand the endocannabinoid system. Dr. Raphael McCollum is really responsible for uh, the endocannabinoid system and his research, he comes from Israel and it was his research team. And he discovered the cannabinoid receptors in 1980 and then that kind of escalated into the signaling mo molecules of cannabis. But I love this quote by him because he says, you know, receptors are made of compounds that produce, or that, that we produce, not because there is a plant out there. And I think there is a lot of buzz with CBD, particularly, uh, and marijuana. And I think we're losing the sight that are actually uh, the endocannabinoid system is endogenous to our bodies. It is built into our bodies. Uh, and the, uh, the government noticed this in about 2003 and they actually made a federal patent uh, and they put a patent on cannabinoids. Uh, if you, we look at the overall system, we have the endocannabinoid system. We know that we have a couple different receptors, CB1 and CB2, and there's controversy about the CB3 receptor. We know that we have signaling molecules, and I'm gonna go in quite a much detail about what these signaling molecules do and what the cannabinoid enzymes do. Uh, in 2013, Poch and Kunos, they actually stated this, the modulating the endocannabinoid system acting may, be ha may have a therapeutic yeah. potential in almost all disease affecting humans, including obesity, med metabolic syndrome, diabetes, diabetic complications, neurodegenerative diseases, inflammatory, cardiovascular, liver, GI, skin disease, pain, psychiatric disorders, cachexia, cancer, chemotherapy, and induced nausea and vomiting, among others. So what is the cannabinoid system? Well, it's responsible for two main things. One, it modulates the pleasure, energy, and well-being. And two, it is kind of a slow nudge back to health uh, in the face of injury and disease. It is a system that polices and builds up or looks at the breakdown of function and it's always trying to find the balance of disease and injur injury and it, it, it tries to restore balance and it does this in uh, these micro adjustments in our body of when things go awry. Your CBD2 receptors, they are very dynamic receptors they are increase and decrease in the response, depending on what's how the body's responding. And we do know that both of all of these receptors are coupled into the G protein uh, coupled receptors. And we know that this family of receptors has, uh, uh, has to be created or replaced every two to three days in, in, in the body. Uh, the cannabinoid signaling receptors uh, really are only made when the CB1 and CB2 uh, receptors are due to injury or disease. So that's when they actually are activated. And they go well beyond being a neurotransmission. They are responsible for a, a, a broad range of stabilizing and destabilizing activities in the body and we don't really understand them to full magnitude currently. And then we have the cannabinoid enzymes. We know that some of these synthesize and some of these break down, and really they break down into anandamide. AEE is considered anandamide, uh, so that's, you'll hear me say those interchangeably. And we know that AEE interacts with, or the, the enzymes, interact with the hormones, cytokines, growth factors, pleasure molecules, the immune system, connective tissue, bone metabolism, nerve, and the glial cells and inflammation, and cell regeneration, and uh, they're and programmed for death. The endocannabinoid system 
And this is where I want actually the signaling is the two, I can't say that, so I'm not even gonna try, so I'm gonna say anandamide. And in Sanskrit, that means bliss, okay? And amide means the end. The, the signaling factor it really is a neurotransmitter and it's a chemical signaling uh, the neural syn synapse. And we know that we have, or we, we discovered, or Dr. Raphael's team discovered that <clears throat> the receptor sites are on the presynaptic uh, nerve ending. And that's, those are where the receptors are actually located. And we know that there is a cell membrane that transports this th to give the effect. And it's, we also know that it's found in chocolate and we know that we produce this signaling molecule when we meditate and we can put our body into that sympathetic mode. Now the 2AG is a, nut, is a neuromodulator and it is, there's high levels in the central nervous system and it's also found in animal milk and breast milk and it has a greater affinity to the CBD2 receptors and uh, I already kind of said that, that it's, they work on the presynaptic nerve. And, but the interesting thing is they work in a retrograde manner, and that meaning backwards. And compared to other neurotransmitters, that, that, is, that was kind of the first of its kind. Uh, from my knowledge, both of these signaling factors uh, stop inflammation in the body. Uh, and what they do is they trim down the synapse or, or enlarge the synapse. CB1 is more prominent in our brain and our central nervous system, but it is throughout our whole entire body, and it is very involved in nerve endings and fine-tuning fine the autonomic nervous system, and the autonomic nervous system is for, you know, breathing and your, your heart rate and connective tissue and metabolic rate. It's instrumental in bone formation and osteoporosis, and the inf it, it gets influenced by the activation of anandamide, uh, but also 2-AG neurotransmitters, and those are influenced by the norepinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, uh, and GABA and endorphins, which I found was really actually quite interesting. Uh, due to the location of the CBD1 uh, receptors, they affect pain, pleasure, memory, cognition, motor function, energy, metabolism. They decrease the cellular nerve firing, and they decrease brain-based brain inflammation and the immune cells and slow down inflammation. CB1 also is found to increase gut motility in healthy states. And this, being in the functional medicine community, we know how important the gut is. And I'm going to talk about how see, this receptor is actually focusing on the gut in just a, in just a minute. But there's a lot of CB1 cells in the glial cells, and that's, there's nine times more glial cells in the brain than there is in nerve endings. <coughs> And so no, we know 90% of our brain is the glial cells. And for a long time, these cells were considered only to hold the nerve endings. And now we, find, we found out that they do much more. They help with nutrition and energy and production and, and coordination and immunity and synaptic plasticity. Our CBD2 receptors are more prominent in our immune system. 80% of our immune system is near our gut, and it also has been found in the peripheral uh, tissues of, of, the, of the brain and throughout the body. And these activate, uh, this is what I found was really interesting. When they're activated, they tear away and they cloak the cancer cells and make the cancer cells invisible to the immune system by preventing and them from multiplying and spreading. And they also help with uh, bone formation and increasing the bone reabsorption during the actual bone development phase. Uh, and the, D the TPVR1 receptor really causes the bones to break down and it combats that. 
Now, out of the 8,000 PubMed studies, there is what's called this Cannabis Help Index Rating System, where they were trying to figure out how do we make sense of CBD and marijuana and cannabis as a whole. And they looked at the studies of design, and they were looking to see, okay, if it's double signed or if it came from a laboratory study, let's give it a positive or a minus and times out the numbers and when they were looking at the study. So they were giving a point system to all of the different studies that have actually came out on cannabis. And cannabis, what does it help you with? According to this cannabis help index, on the rating system, uh, let me go back there, because if you have one star, it's probable. If you have five stars, it's act in actuality. Uh, and it's, po it, it's probable if you get three stars. So if you go back to this, this is why this was such an interest to me. Autoimmune disease, I, it was four stars. Nothing else really had four stars besides cancer. And that's why it made such an impact when I was looking at the research. Uh, so Mastuda said this, and I thought this was kind of a, a funny quote. And he, it said, if there's an assortment of keys that unlock the same lock, but the doors open into a different room, depending on the keys that are used. And I think really CBD kind of fits into that classification. Amer cannabis as a whole kind of fits into that classification. Yeah. So it's the only four star which is into, it's beyond probable, it's just autoimmune? Cancer. There's oh, a couple cancers that are prostate, and, bre prostate and breast cancer. The book that I have, the CBD book, goes into this in a lot of detail. Yeah, that book, the CBD book, goes into a lot of detail about this system. I was just trying to condense what he, uh, well, they interest, said. Yeah, seizures only three. I thought that was three. its primary issue. Oh. Well, well the gentleman putting down only three. Yeah. That doesn't mean that that's, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, yeah, please, that's go That's an ahead. excellent book, by the way. Those two choices that she showed you are a phenomenal. But you, you have to look at that it, three rather than four. It's still. It, There's still a lot of research I, that needs there, to be done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probable. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That was the biggest. So actual, very, very so beneficial. Like but what's interesting is what you're hearing and what we're talking about is only some of the things that it actually does. You know, you're not talking about a four star because no one wants to use the word C. <laughs> <laughs> it wants to use yeah. the word. Well, cancer's there. There is a couple cancers that have four. There is Cannabis? a couple, couple yeah, cancers. Oh, God. <laughs> and, in the, and in the book, they go in a lot of detail with cancer. In the book, they do. It, it separates every cancer out in the book. So what causes poor endocannabinoid tone? Well, we, we know this as functional medicine practitioners. Poor diet, lack of exercise, drug abuse, poor environmental toxins, uh, the genetic factors that come into play, chronic stress, uh, compromised health. So all of the things that we're talking about and that we're trying to help patients with, that actually causes the poor endocannabinoid tone. I'm not going into a lot of detail, but there's a lot of different uh, receptors that we uh, that I haven't even discussed that I could go that there would be different offshoots and you can see that here uh, now the interesting thing is the CB1 and the CBD2 receptors I'm saying CBD but I mean CB1 okay uh, have they have an opposite effect effect of each other one we're first out of the gate we're going to talk about gut health because I, I kind of told you that it controls a lot of your gut function CBD, cannabis does in general, is put the body back into a homeostasis, and it's always trying to restore balance. And so they always have, the, the two receptors always have this opposite effect on each other. Naturally, epitype means Cheetos and brownies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the liver, uh, the cannabinoid receptors are usually absent in the liver, but when the liver becomes fatty, they are expressed in a multiple cell types. 
and they increase the blood lipids or they decrease the blood lipids. I'm not going to go through the sign by each one of these, but because uh, you guys can read them. But just know that they have an opposite effect of each other. And the cardiovascular, it may either help the heart deteriorate or it actually promotes cardiac health. And the one interesting thing about the cardiovascular, the research that we know, are the two enzymes. Uh, we know that these two enzymes cause brain inflammation. And there's, hopefully we can get some more research on, on those, but that's where we stand with the cardiovascular. Muscle tissue, this is why you'll see a lot of people that go to FitCon or, or CrossFit because it actually helps uh, promote or inhibit energy, muscle formation, or destruction. I, there's been lots of studies with obesity. In obese people, uh, it ends up to, the endocannabinoid system actually becomes more active in the bloodstream and in the muscles. And there was a product that was put out in Europe called uh, Rimabrant, and it actually was using the CB receptors, and it actually got pulled from the market because it was causing depression and suicidal thought. But when you go back and look at that, of those receptors, the neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, and GABA, we know that CB, CB1 affects that. So they might need to tweak, they need to tweak that, and they pulled that. Uh, we know. What are you saying? Well, you're saying it's good that they pulled it? What about tweaking? Well, it was only in Europe. It never came to the U.S. anyways. Right. That drug never came to the U.S. Uh, it was only in Europe, and they pulled it because it was having uh, effects, negative effects. Uh, people were committing suicide, and it was putting them into depression. And that's pretty much all I know about that drug, to be Is honest. Is that consistent with what you're saying, or...? Uh, no, I'm saying that it affects those, affects those receptors, and we, I don't know if we know how to formulate the drugs properly as of yet, because we do know that it affects, and either we need to block them or activate the receptors, and I don't know if we have that information. So that negative effect is real, so it just needs to be Not the found Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that, that, that depends on what they're using as far as in that CBD. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, dosing. That, yeah. Dosing, and then also, when we say CBD, we're, we're throwing everything into this huge umbrella. And we'll talk a little bit more on that, too. Cool, so. cool. Uh, we kind of already talked about bones. Uh, this was interesting, that it helped male and female fertur uh, fertility. Uh, and it helps the, the embryo develop, the nerve cells and the axons. Uh, and one, it dominates and helps establish and re re relocate those brain cells. Uh, and the other one does the opposite effect. It is, this was the other thing why CBD was interesting to me because I was having all those skin issues. And uh, we know that CB, the re well, I should say that, the receptors, both of the receptors are in the skin layers and all of the skin cells. And this is why it was essential for me uh, to decrease my skin information, uh, inflammation. But it's also, there's quite a bit of strong evidence of uh, melanoma formation and helping decrease melanoma formation. Like I said, there was a bunch of, there's a bunch of uh, information on different cancer. These are the studies, to my knowledge, that they've actually started to research. And then on pain management, uh, we know that it helps with chronic management of pain. We know that it helps with uh, neuropathy and affects the pain receptors. There's a lot of talk about is, is CBD in medical marijuana actually a gateway drug? Well, the, there's no studies currently that we've actually found that there's a lethal dose of using cannabis. The body will actually shut down, and it's helpful in lowering those medications and the opioids, and really you could actually help substitute those with the, the pain uh, because they help uh, break down the degenerative disorders of, of what causes the pain. Uh, 
they have done a several different studies to help to see if cannabis treats the symptoms. And well, well, let me go back. Cannabis really treats the symptoms of withdrawal. Your nausea, your muscle pain, your anxiety, your insomnia, mm -hmm. the, the runny nose. That's where it really it has a, a big benefit. Did you have a question, Shirley? Yeah. So you're talking about marijuana here. Cannabis, when you say cannabis, cannabis is CBD and yeah. marijuana. Yeah, we're, but we're both, I'm talking specifically, this, this is CBD as well. Uh, delivery methods. How do you ingest? You, do we inhale it? Do we use it topically? There's a variety of different uh, methods. One thing that you need to know about CBD is it's lipophilic. It's fat loving. So that's why you'll see it in oil infusions with the liquid coconut, olive oil, hemp, sunflower, or others. And I'm really interested in Med7's pre presentation because there's a lot of uh, conversations out there about water soluble and uh, also liposomal and nanotechnology with CBD. And I, so uh, hopefully you speak to that because yeah. that's, yeah, so great. Uh, so our compounders can put this in cocoa butter and stick it under your tongue? And they're not compounding with it. <laughs> you can't compound with it yet, but I don't know. Why not? Well, there's some legal yeah, we'll, go, we'll, go the, we'll go into the legal <laughs> issues in a second. <laughs> Dispensaries might be coming, though. We, the, they've al actually, if the, this bill gets passed in October, they've allocated a 13 a dispensaries for the state of Utah. And th they, are, they are doing, this is just a side note, there's a Utah CAN conference in October and uh, trying to promote awareness of what it does so that the ballot actually gets approved. Well, I thought it was only controlled under the Agricultural Act, so there really isn't something that tells you you can't. Well, we're going to talk, I'll talk That's about, that. yeah, think. okay, so since you brought it up, I'll, I'll speak to that okay. a this little bit. <laughs> this is, yeah. <laughs> uh, right now, the DEA has been put, there's a hold on it. They've, they've limited the police officers the, any, allocating any funds towards CBD or actually marijuana. And uh, one, and Right now, it's actually scheduled to be removed from a Schedule One drug, and the DEA has actually agreed to do that, and we're just wait waiting for the, per the paperwork. Federally. So, somewhat. Fe federally, the how, oh. Go ahead. The, the Senate has actually gone and said, yes, we want to get it off as a scheduled drug, uh, but it's still waiting to go through the House to be approved by the House to be off as a scheduled drug. Uh, as you already know, to be the schedule it is right now, it has to cause harm. Mm -hmm. The problem is the DEA and FDA are at odds because they cannot actually show that it is actually a harmful ingredient or supplement. So in order to save face, supposedly by the, you know, by the one or the other, because the FDA is supposed to be our friend, uh, but what happens is as a schedule, it's not. So you've got two things. They cannot prove that it's the same as heroin. Right? There's no way. And so they just left it there. And there's, there's a lot of background behind this. Mm. So there's a lot of political um, jockeying, shall we say, to actually try and make that the case. But we're hoping that hopefully by the 26th or coming up here uh, this month, we're going to have some, some uh, shed some light on this, that they actually say that it will not be a scheduled, anything that's under a certain percentage will no longer be a scheduled drug. As far schedule, as the problem, schedule one. schedule one. Correct. Just schedule one. Yeah. So if hemp is a non-scheduled drug, then it makes it free to use. So state by state, it's been a different case. Here, agriculturally, with the, the uh, farm, farm well, under the farm bill, that's different. So President Obama and the farm bill actually said, as long as it's Kentucky hemp, it's actually and really industrial hemp, meaning it's under a certain dry weight, 3% dry weight, 
it's federally somewhat protected, meaning that they cannot put any monies towards prosecution or investigation of anybody using that or doing it up, you know, using that way. They tried to say that it was only under um, the guise of um, research. And so they've tried to take that back and throw out basically what President Obama had done in the Farms Bill, and that's where this all blew up. So most of the leaders, uh, you know, uh, President Trump, a lot of the others are, uh, Mitch McConnell, are all behind uh, getting um, hemp. Well, let's really get it right. It's really cannabis under 3% a, uh, off the schedule. It would be a non-schedule. So here's the problem when that actually does happen is Epidiolex was, has been approved for, it's a CBD isolate, and it has been approved uh, and, and been given what's called an orphan clause, meaning that they, they, they're the ones that have the restrictions. So once we have the DEA issue settled, then we move into the FDA, and does the FDA consider it a drug? That's yet to be determined. <laughs> So, but, but with that, so on the epidiolix and uh, on that as well, it's an isolate. It's like taking a carrot and I'm going to take exactly what I want out of that carrot and I'm going to patent that and call that, you know, my, now my carrot. So if, if the, the idea behind this is if that does happen, is it going to just be an isolate, which a lot of people are mm -hmm. taking isolate, which is basically taking the raw ingredients from the plant and then making it in a powder form, basically getting rid of all the good nutrition out of it. Mm -hmm. You're getting rid of all the omegas, you're getting rid of all the flavonoids, you're getting rid of all the, everything that's good in there. What's that? Isn't that marinol? Yeah. It is, yeah. and yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's not gonna work just yeah. by doing what they're doing right now, because most are actually, you know, you get a gummy bear, they're taking, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take the- You're fine, you go ahead. What they're doing is they're taking an isolate, and I want to do a, yeah. a little commercial with this. <laughs> they're putting it in water, and they're spraying it on a gummy bear. Oh, now you have a gummy bear CBD. Oh, guess what? I'm going to take it in an MCT oil that you were talking about before, which is a coconut oil, sunflower oil, hemp seed. But hemp seed has actually that. no CBD quality whatsoever. Right. It's just a, it's just an oil. Yeah. It's a carrier oil. Right. And does it absorb very well in the carrier oil? No, it doesn't. So what happens is, you know, they're calling it that. So anybody that's really doing an isolate is probably going to be in trouble. Those that are doing a full spectrum, mm -hmm. probably going to be okay. That's going to be the argument. So if it's in a powdered form, that's going to be a real controversy. But the FDA is on their side. They and the full spectrum is a better anyways because there's an entourage effect. So the full spectrum is is a better form of receiving it than a, a isolating with CBD. Yeah, but what's going on with supplements right now is the biggest scam in America. It's billions yes. and billions of dollars. Right. So as soon as we get a CBD non-regulated, mm -hmm. you know, we're back in the same position with supplements. Yep. Unless the FDA Ooh. makes it a drug, mm -hmm. and then you, there is a possibility that they do is something it like Tylenol. Is your backyard, or is it a CBD? You know, I mean, it's not any longer. <clears throat> and that's why, as practitioners, trying to find something that's real, third-party certified, is really difficult. It takes hours to get stuff on my shelf to make sure it's real. Mm -hmm. And Ryan... I'm back here now. It's almost yep. <laughs> there, Ryan. <laughs> and Linda. Yeah have excellent products, but it takes a lot of effort. How do we find out if our CBD is okay? That's, that's third, a real question. We need third party certification like we do you our do. supplements. Mm -hmm. And I tell my patients all the time, get them from a pharmacist, get right, them from someone who does too. what they do. Don't go into GNC. Yeah, don't yeah. go to yep. Walmart, Kmart, GNC, because right. you'll die. That's right. what happens <laughs> in China if you don't. True. Yeah. They sold the drywall, the moldy drywall, this calcium filler to Nature's Way. Is that the right one? Three people died back east. Oh my God. Because they couldn't sell it as drywall because it had mold. So they ground it up and sold so. it as calcium. And there's a lot of preservatives that are actually put into CBD. Yeah. Uh, there's tons of preservatives, fillers, and so as a functional medicine, integrative that's, medicine, that's you got to watch out for that. That's why we're here. There's counterfeit supplement. Out rings all over oh, the world who will yeah. fake labels in bottles oh. and putting fake powder in capsules and selling it for which is why it's dangerous to buy supplements over the internet mm -hmm. yeah yeah sending someone to costco to get their their coq10 well there's a little bit of coq10 in olive oil <laughs>
Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's it's pretty scary because CBD is going to be in the exact same place. We'll address that in, in a little bit too because I know you you got yours, but nobody. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, I, I'll I'll go pet through I, this really quick. At the pharmacy. Please. Yeah, please. So, um, besides the two of you, I've also spoken with Farm to Pharma, and, and they have been saying some of the same things. But I spoke to Senator uh, Evan Vickers, uh, who's one of the people who's been working on the legal legis legislation here in Utah. He's a pharmacist. He's been working with other people to try and get this done properly through the medical channels, pharmacy, and so forth. Anyway, um, I used to stock the CBD oil a year ago, and then it was a gray area questionable, so I stopped. We just put ours in our drawer and still sold it. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm a pharmacy, I have a license on, and the employees that thought it was inappropriate. So, oh. I, I, the person was nice enough to take it back, and I, um, anyway, so since Evan Vickers has pushed through and got the legislation so that in Utah, a pharmacy can sell CBD legally now as long as they can document that it is certified what it's supposed to be, CBD oil less than 0.3% THC. Um, so we've got the documentation, which I understand is supposed to be here. Pharma, Pharma has it and has it in 10 pharmacies in, in Salt Lake Valley. They should be quality and it should be okay. And so I have yet to restock it. I said it at the this meeting and then decided to do it. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, we threw you off. No, you're fine. You're no, you're this totally is fine. Heart of what we need to have yeah, the, this is so the, yeah, and I I I am quickly. I'll quickly address that. Uh, let me just go through the slides because it might ask some. It might answer some of these questions. Uh, when you're looking at bioavailability, we know that rectally you actually are uh, absorbing it the best. So suppositories are actually the best way to actually receive, uh, and that's really no surprise. When you're dosing, uh, first time users, uh, according to uh, Michael Mollowitz's books, his, his graph is on the left hand side. Really you need to start out slow and we need to titrate up uh, for dosing. That's a little bit compli complicated, complicated for a lot of people, so I'll just tell them to take a half a dropper, then add a fourth of a dropper, add a, keep adding a fourth of a dropper until they actually have the, the benefit. And then if they are getting tired or they're having any side effects from it, I'll tell them to back off an eighth. And that way that's easier for patients. And I send this out with everyone uh, so people actually have this. When you're looking at dosing, that's the other thing on the bottles. You'll typically the dosages are 250, 500, 1,000. I've seen a couple different companies have 300 and 600 milligrams of CBD actually out there. So depending on typically they're most the majority of the time they're in a 30 ml bottle. So depending on if it's a 250, which is in my case the plus, uh, I have 0.42 milligrams per drop. Uh, the studies that I've actually seen are, most people will say start out at three milligrams. Most people are comfortable at 15 milligrams. That's where they find their, their happy place is about 15 milligrams uh, twice a day. Uh, things to consider about the product is if it is, if, does the CBD come from cannabis or does the CBD come from um, hemp? And Really, there's a school of thought if it actually comes from the marijuana plant that has the entourage effect because there's more cannabinoids that are in there. It, that's not legal in the state of Utah, so that's why it's hemp. Uh, I also, if it has less than 0.3%, is actually considered uh, hemp oil or CBD. Those words are used interchangeably, just so you, so you guys are aware. Uh, so does it matter if it come, where did the CBD come from? So the answer is kind of yes and no, uh, depending. And we just kind of had that conversation. Full spectrum is better than an isolate because if you can get as many cannabinoids or phytocannabinoids as possible, that's actually better. Uh, and you have quite a few producers now that have changed to producing uh, 
a higher CBD content hemp and typically their CO2 extraction. There's a couple different ways, modalities that you can extract it from the hemp or from, uh, or from. one is CO2 extraction, the other is ethanol, and I think there's a couple other uh, different modalities, but those are the only two that I currently studied is the, CO, the CO2. And I believe, in my opinion, the CO2 extraction is a little bit is better. Uh, <clears throat> but I recently had a conversation with somebody and so I'm kind of on this fence if it needs to be ethanol or CO2. Currently, Legends product is a CO2 extraction, extracted. Uh, we kind of talked about if it's a whole plant versus an isolate. Uh, it's a full spectrum, in my opinion, is always going to be better. And Dr. Raphael's McCollum's team kind of just said that as well, because because of the entourage effect, you want as many of those cannabinoids that we can actually have. Have uh, one of my things is, Dean Jolly, because you and I talk specifically about citric acid. So citric acid for people that have autoimmune disease typically is made from wheat. And, and so watch if it has citric acid. And I know citric acid is in everything and because you guys are probably already telling your patients anyways. But one of my things is, well, how is that, where is the, cit the citric acid coming from? Because that can cause an inflammatory response in a lot of people. So just watch out for that preservative because it's, it's very commonly used. It's, it's in extremely all commonly used. Kids and <laughs> huh? It is. Yeah. Citric yeah. acid is in all of your yeah. kids candy. Yeah. It is. In everything. It's hard, it's hard to find something without it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to find something without it. Uh, again, accuracy and labeling, there's really no, because the FDA hasn't actually put a stance on this, it's not regulated or received, so can, people can just put anything on labels right now. So that needs to be uh, addressed, and if it's an outdoor versus an indoor grow, and I kind of already talked about that. So I do third party tested, I send it out uh, to make sure, and I analyze it when I receive it, because I manufacture it, and then I analyze it after I send it out to make sure that it has the milligrams of that I say it does on the bottle. Uh, so <clears throat> I think everybody has a story of how they their journey to become a legend. And that's why I called it uh, Legends because everybody has a journey and everybody has a story. And so what what is yours going to be? I am offering today, if you guys want, actually want to go to the website and Nick is here. Uh, because if you have any clinical questions after this, come talk to me. And, but if Nick is here because he, if he, we have any, uh, he can set you up to become a retailer. So you can actually put it into your, in, put it in your office. Uh, in the meantime, you can go to the website. It's legendshealth.net. Uh, put the coupon code in Utah Hormone, and you'll get 50% off, and that's good for the next week. Okay, and that's that's it for me.